Hello and welcome back to the Build Your Own Pokebot series. This video is going to be about scaling up to six players. So six player No Limit Texas Hold'em is by far the most popular version of Texas Hold'em. It's played most in casinos and tournaments and that kind of thing. Um, and in 2019, Pluribus was able to beat the top professionals in um, six player No Limit Texas Hold'em. Now the real challenge from going from heads up to six player no limit hold'em is the scaling problem. And that's because the size of the game is massive, even compared to a large game like uh, no limit Texas hold'em. So in order to do this, you need to do very aggressive techniques to reduce the size of the game tree, memory usage, and that kind of thing like that. Now the good thing is all the techniques used in heads up can be applied to, um, to the six player version. And there's only some slight variations and a couple things, and I'll, I'll go over that. Now, one more note. Um, CFR is not going to converge to a Nash equilibrium in six players. Um, and that's because simply uh, six players is not a two-player zero-sum game. Um, but if you use all the techniques, you will still get strong results. So the first change we're going to discuss is in the CFR algorithm itself, and that is using discounted regret schemes. So the idea is when we're adding regrets to the regret sum, we're going to give less weight to early iterations. Uh, this is very similar to what we did in CFR Plus when we were calculating the average strategy. So the strategy sum wasn't as affected as much on the early strategies than the later ones. Okay, so here's the example from the paper. Say we're at a state where our payoffs are for actions are 0, 1, and negative a million. Now, if we were to calculate this using the, the regular uniform regret strategy, uh, after the first iteration, we'll get something like 33,000, 33, zero. And that would give us a strategy of 50%, 50%, zero. Now, just looking at this, we can see we want to play this action with 100% probability. This one was zero, and this one is zero as well. So in order to get to that, it's going to take us uh, about half a million iterations to land on that optimal strategy. So clearly using the uniform regret in this case uh, is, is very inefficient. Now if we're using um, these regret discounting schemes, we can actually get it in only about a, a thousand iterations. So there's two main techniques for doing this. The first one is linear CFR and the second one is discounted CFR. Uh, both have their pros and cons. In linear CFR, uh, weights are going to be scaled linearly based on what iteration is on. So the more iterations, the more impact it's going to have on the final regret zone. In discount CFR, um, weights for the positive, negative, and the average strategies are going to be based on their own kind of formula with their own uh, parameters. Linear CFR is going to do better with a wide range of payoffs, uh, so a high or low very positive, very negative um, payoffs, um, and with uh, chance sampling. So this is just uh, random guesses. Uh, for this, it was used as the blueprint strategy in Pluribus. So this shows that linear CFR uh, can scale to very large games. Uh, discount CFR is considered more state-of-the-art in the general approach. It does a lot better in most cases. Uh, but again, it doesn't work with um, uh, Monte Carlo CFR or um, large games like that, but it can't be used in the subgame solving. Uh, one more note about discount CFR: uh, it can conflict with um, pruning techniques like regret-based pruning, and that's because uh, one of the popular ways of um, discounting negative regrets is to basically prevent it from going to negative infinity. Um, and for this, you're not going to get these very large negative regrets in discount CFR. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the changes to subgame solving. So first of all, lossless abstraction is only used in the round you're trying to solve. Um, and then a coarser abstraction to any round after that. Uh, so for example, say you're solving on the turn, your turn cards are using lossless abstraction, but when you go onto the river in that subgame, uh, you're gonna use a, a much coarser abstraction. Uh, you do this because um, if you have multiple players, even at the subgame, the game can be very large. So to save time and space, um, use a coarser abstraction at the uh, after rounds. 
Uh, next, um, you want to kind of avoid using safe subgame solving because it's uh, very inefficient. So safe subgame solving plays all hands with, uh, gives it all hands an equal chance of being played. But the thing is, in six player Texas Hold'em, there are actually a lot of cards that are folded with 100% probability. Um, and if you use unsafe subgame solving, you're not going to really be exploring uh, those cards and just focusing mainly on the, the cards more likely to happen. Now, for using unsafe subgame solving, um, the strategies are only fixed up to the previous rounds uh, rather than the, the current state it's in. Um, so this means that say you're on the flop and it goes check check and then you're trying to solve after that point um, you're going to solve the entire flop so that means um, uh, all the other players can change the amount or the percentage that they would uh, check uh, the, the their spot or whatever okay and uh, when you're doing death limit solving um, all players can actually choose different strategies during the Monte Carlo situations. Um, and heads up, um, only the traverser, or only the opponent, would explore all these different strategies. The traverser would basically play the uh, into the blueprint strategy. So if you only allow the opponent to deviate their strategies, what normally happens is the opponent's going to choose either a, a very aggressive or playing in the equilibrium which is gonna make um, the Traverser play a little more of a defensive style. Um, this doesn't really work in multiple players, so you're actually, by allowing the Traverser to try multiple strategies, um, you'll actually get a, a truer strategy. Okay, now let's discuss reducing the size of the game tree. So six player poker has an absolute massive uh, game tree and it would be virtually impossible to optimize that. So you have to take some very aggressive steps to uh, reduce the size of the game tree. So we'll start with actions, and you want to use at most five actions per information set in the game. Um, so these include any mandatory actions, so if call and folding is a legal move, that has to be included, which leaves about like three to four um, raises. So if you add, want to add uh, multiple raises at one time, so you, for instance, you could raise three, you could raise four, or raise five, for example. Uh, these scale pretty linearly, so you can add a couple more if you want. But re-raises um, just absolutely balloon in size, and they'll uh, increase exponentially. So uh, I limited it just to three re-raises. Uh, now for information abstraction, uh, lossless abstraction is only used for the pre-flop. -pre and then only 200 potential aware buckets for the m remaining rounds. And this is extremely coarse abstraction. Now, personally, I rounded pot sizes um, whenever I could. So for example, uh, a pot of 14, 15, 16 will all be grouped into the 15 set. And uh, I ignored the, uh, the player's positionings and only uh, six players remaining. So. If they were position one pre-flop, uh, that would be just ignored anything else, everywhere else. Okay, next uh, let's discuss reducing the total memory usage. And for starters, we can uh, start by only storing regressive actions that we've reached. Uh, and this is because about two-thirds of information sets, only two-thirds of information sets are ever reached. So we don't need to waste memory storing something that's never going to be reached. Uh, next, uh, strategy sums are not stored in memory. Instead, uh, every so often, what you want to do is take a snapshot of the current strategy and save that into the disk. And then when you're calculating the average strategy for the blueprint, you average out all these snapshots. Uh, you can do this in six player uh, Texas Hold'em because there's no actual Nash equilibrium. So you're not really getting a benefit from grabbing all the strategies and taking the average. And also the optimal strategy you're gonna use at the end is pretty close to the current strategy you're taking, you know, the strategy you get from uh, uh, grabbing all the regrets. And lastly, uh, what we could do is store all the average regrets in the pre-flop after uh, a certain amount of time of training and use that for a blueprint strategy for the rest of the, the training process. Uh, you can do this because uh, your pre-flop uh, states are gonna converge to a pretty uh, good strategy rather quickly. 
so you don't really need to kind of keep computing them and storing uh, these information sets of memories. And lastly, let's discuss how we can reduce the computation cost. So for starters, we'll use uh, pruning techniques to avoid extremely negative regrets. So this means we're only going to traverse or explore actions, uh, negative actions, about 5% of the time. Um, in Pluribus, uh, negative 300,000 was used as this parameter. So that means if an action ever has a regret um, lower than negative 300,000, there's only a 5% chance that it would uh, be explored for the rest of the iteration. Uh, next, only use linear CFR for the first part of training. Uh, you can do this because after a while, the regrets are going to be basically multiplied by 0.9999 and so on. So it's going to have very little effect and you're just going to be adding unnecessary computation time to your iteration. And lastly, a little small note, um, only make uh, one call to the random net number generator um, once per iteration whenever possible.